Hello there 585ers. This video is dedicated to helping you do Module 7. Module 7 is using the Scratch programming language to build your own Scratch game. Now to make this very simple for you, I have in the module uh, the pictures of the code that you would, you would need to make the two characters that are in this particular game. Uh, the second character in the game, the fish, you can make more fish, and I hope you will, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and then you're going to make a shark. But first, let's look at the environment. And the first thing you need to do when you go to Scratch at MIT, the link is available right there in the module, is you need to create an account for yourself. Once you create that account, uh, the Scratch environment will send you an email, and you must confirm the email to be allowed to share and then get the embed code that you will put on a page in a wiki so that you have proof that you did this. So let's look at the environment. I went in here and clicked on Create. It has taken me to the area where you work. This area right here that has a little kitty cat standing in it, that's called the stage. And down here, this is where the things that you use are located. Uh, I think of this as like a task tray, or if you want to just make it even simpler than that, this is the box where all of your stuff lives. Right here in the center, this is the code that you will use. The beauty of Scratch is you do not write code from scratch, if you'll forgive the pun. You basically use code that has already been written and divide it up into these different categories. So if like for motion, we have different scratch pieces that tell us how to do things. Under looks, we have different ways for the characters to respond to things or to change things. Under sound, this one's not used a lot, and it needs to be. This is how you can actually have a soundtrack, or if you want to add the sound of what happens when the shark catches the fish, you can do that here. The pen is allowing you to write on the screen. Data is where we will create a variable that we will then add to our game so that it will keep score. Something important to do in a game, events, this is probably where the most important piece lives. It is this one right here where it says, when the green flag is clicked. You must have that in uh, so that you can test your code as you go along. But as you can also see, there are other things in here. When such a, so a key is spaced and so on, this is how you can control the game through using keys. The control, this is where an awful lot of things happen. And you'll see here in just a minute, we're going to jump right in to using this one. This is where you can create ways that the game responds to things that are happening. So touching the mouse, touching an object, so on and so on. Operators, this is Boolean logic. You're not going to be using it. The more blocks is where you can actually create scripts that will talk to um, external devices like uh, there are little robots called we do's and you can program for them all right let's get started the first thing we want to do is we want to determine that we are doing a game called shark attack and so first of all we need to find an appropriate background so i'm going to click on the background button down here I'm going to go into the category of water, and I'm going to grab this water one. And now I have a nice watery background. Well, then I have to realize I really don't need this cat now. Now, notice whenever I want to change something, I have to go into my box below to select it to then add code to it or to change it. So I'm going to click on the cat, and I'm going to right-click on the cat, whose name, by the way, is Scratchy and I'm going to delete it. Well, now I need to find a sprite to take its place. So in our game, 
Our main character, or what kids would call the boss, is a shark. So I'm going to go find a shark, but you are more than welcome to create a game using a character that you want to use. So here he is. Here's the shark. I've seen kids create games using octopuses. I mean, you name it. Uh, bats are also a favorite. Because basically what this game is, is about is capturing things as a boss. You can switch the code and make it a game like Frogger where you're trying to avoid the boss. We'll show you how. So I'm going to go ahead and click him in. Once I get him in, I can change the size of him up here. If I click there, that will make him bigger. I'm not going to make him too much bigger. Just like that. Now I have my shark. I want to teach my shark what to do. So the first thing I do always is I click on events and I drag over the green flag, which basically says nothing's going to happen until you click on the green flag. Now, in the case of the code here, you can read or you can play the code anytime by clicking it here. I'm now going to have him do something where he'll do the same thing over and over again because I want to be able to control him. So if I only did one thing, that'd be it. So I'm going to pull over this block called forever. It basically means the stuff that lives inside of the block I'm going to be doing over and over again. Now to get him to move, obviously I want to go to motion. And the easiest way to do this is to grab move so many steps and drop it inside. Now this is when you need to start thinking about checking things. But I also realize that I have an edge here. Well, if I were now to click on this, he would run across the screen and disappear. So I want to make sure that I keep him in the game by putting in another motion one that says if he hits the edge, he bounces back in. Now I can run and see how it works. And as you can see, he now moves and back and forth across the screen. What do you think would happen if you changed this number in here? If I change it to 5, he slows down. Let's try it. If I change it to, oh, I don't know, let's try 20. It speeds up. Now, since this is going to be controlled by me and my mouse, I really don't want it running crazy like that. So I'm going to take it back down to a 10. And he moves a little bit slower for me. Now I hope you're noticing that I can click on this flag here to see how the code runs. And then I click on the stop sign to stop it. Or I can click on the green flag up here. The difference is... When you click on the code here, it only plays the code that's right here. When you get everything built, you click here to see all the different codes work together. All right, so now we have him um, involved with moving around on the screen. What we'd like to do is to have him follow us around the screen. So I'm going to now drag over something called point towards the mouse pointer. When I do that, I can now test it. And as you can see, when I bring my mouse in, he's following the cursor around on the screen. Simple as that. Now, this is a kind of interesting looking character, but I'd like to animate him a little bit. So we're going to change and add something that adds a little more interest to him. How about if we were to change his background or change his costume? If I change his costume, I might be able to get him to look a little more animated, a little more aggressive. 
Now, I'm just going to go and get into looks and grab next costume and bring that in to my coding section. And now, when I click on the code up here, he looks like he's biting. Because what you've done is, it's like a flip book. You are switching between the two creations, the two sharks that are in the uh, sprite palette. Now, notice when I bring my mouse over, he starts following me around, still going yam, 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 yam. Okay. Isn't that cool? All right. So I'll turn that off. I can move him around. Guess what? I am now done. I have created my shark for the game. So what's next? Well, we want the shark to go after something. So I'm again, I'm going to click on the sprites. I'm going to click on underwater. And I'm going to click on a fish. And I'm going to bring the fish now into my box. What do you see different here? There's no code. When you look at the shark, his code is still there. You look on the fish, and there is no code. So now we have to design for the fish. Well, we know the first code that we always have to put in, and that is the event code when clicked. Now, we're going to do something different here. We're going to, under control, we are going to use the repeat I'm sorry. I'm going to use the repeat until I'm touching something. Sorry about that. Uh, my phone started to ring. All right. We've added our green flag. We've added now repeat until. Okay. How about if we go into sensing and we're going to repeat until something happens. So we want to do something like Repeat until touching. Well, let's go see if we can find that. Here it is. Repeat until. And we put that into it. Now, what does that mean? What do we want to repeat until what? We want to repeat until it's touching. And we're going to put this piece right here inside this little box. Now, right now, it says repeat until touching the mouse pointer. Well, we don't want that. We want to have it repeat until it touches the shark. That's the whole point of the game, is the little fishy is going to try to avoid being eaten by the shark. Now we got to give the little fishy some way to move. So I'm going to go back here to motion. I'm going to move him 10 steps at a time. And I'm going to add that same thing we did to the shark. And I'm going to have him bounce when he hits an edge. As you can see, we can test this. Let's see how it works. Doing pretty much the same thing as our friend the shark did. But what happens if he touches the shark? He stops. And that's what this code does right here. He will keep moving until he hits the shark. Let me get that. Let's get him picked so we can work on him. Make sure our code is right. When he moves, he will move until he touches the shark. Simple as that. Now, when he touches the shark, what's going to happen? Well, he's going to stop. That's already built into the game. But we want it to look like he gets eaten. So I'm going to drag over a block outside of my 
repeat until that says hide. The problem would be if I do that, he's going to disappear. So I want to make sure that every time I restart the game, he comes back. So I'm going to go up here and grab the show, and I'm going to put that under when you press the flag. Now let's see what happens. So here we go. He's moving back and forth, and he's working. Now let's do both of them at the same time. Remember, if you click here, it's only going to affect the one item, the fish. If I click here, then both items come into play. So now my, and he disappeared because I touched him. Okay. If I hit the green flag again, he reappears and he disappears. I think the first thing we need to do is we need to go back in here and we need to put the fish in much smaller because he's too easy to target. So now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go small, 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 small. Now I've got a better chance as the little fish of escaping. Now let's hit the game. And now I'm walking around here and I'm trying to catch him. And boop, he disappears. When I hit the game again to start it, he comes back. See how easy? This is really very, very simple. Now, what if we wanted to add something that happens when we get caught? So I can now go into here and I can add a sound. Now, to add a sound, I want to say play sound I could just do a play sound pop, or, yeah, I could just do a play sound. So I'm going to put it in right here, above the hide, because what's going to happen is, as we go through, if these things happen, the next thing that's going to happen is it'll play the sound, and then it'll hide it. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not really all that interested in pop. That doesn't do anything for me. So let's go look at sounds. Now here you have an amazing selection of noise that you can add to your games. So without being too gross about it, I know when I've done this with kids, they build them to where they record their voices going chomp, 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 chomp. That's cool. How about if we just have a gong noise? So I'm going to add a gong in here. And when I go back to my scripts, you'll notice that where it says play sound, there's a drop down. And now the gong has been added. All right, let's play the game and see what happens. You couldn't hear it, but I can. There's a very large gong noise when the shark bites it. Okay, last thing. We need to keep score. So I'm going to now build a variable. And I'm going to add the variable right here on my fishy under hide. So let's go to data. Make a variable. I'm going to give the variable. This is the name that you want to uh, make that would relate to how your score is going to be. So you could either say score, uh, fish eaten, you know, however you want to do it. So why don't we do this? I'll put fish eaten. That'll be my score, the label for it. And you'll notice I've got here for this sprite only. So I'm going to say OK. I now have a variable that I have created, and I'm going to now add change fish eaten by one. I can change this, but I don't need to. Let's play the game and see what happens. Oh, look up here. 
you now have a scoreboard. So now let's play the game and see what happens. Not only do I hear the gong when he ate the fish, but I see the score has changed up here. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you build a game inside of Scratch. Now, let's let you, let me show you a couple of tricks. We'll let you now play with what you could do. First of all, one fish is kind of boring. How about we add some more? Look how easy that is to do. So I'm going to come down here and right-click on my little fishy, and I'm going to say duplicate, 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 duplicate. Now I have one, two, three, four, five fishies, and each one of them, if you click on them, you'll notice they all have the same code. You, now that you've done this, could go in and change up the code. Maybe this fishy is going to be faster than the others. Maybe this fishy is going to be slower than the others. Oh Lord, no, that fishy would be like flying around them. Let's make him just five. You get the idea. I can change the code so that my fishies have personalities. If I wanted to, I could change now the sound that each fishy would make when it's caught. Let's go ahead and play. Now, all of a sudden, I have a whole bunch of fishies. And as you can see, it kept the score up here for me. I could go in and I could change the sprite character. Because right now, it doesn't understand. I could change this character by going in here to the new sprite. And the sprite I would pick would take the place of this guy, and guess what? He would hang on to his coat. I hope I'm giving you some ideas here about what you could do. Now, very important. Save now. Give it a title. So I'm going to call this Shark Attack. And I'm going to save it. That easy. How do you get it out of here and put it into your wiki space? First of all, you created an account. You confirmed the account. You must do that or else it won't work. So I'll come up here to file and I'll say go to my stuff. So here are all the games that I have been playing, making. So here's my shark attack game. I'm going to double click on it. It pops up. And if I click on the green flag, I have the ability to play my game. I can also see the code. This is the kind of stuff, when I work with kids, they just eat up. They love this. Now, let's get it out of here and into our wiki space. I'm going to click on this button right here that says Share. Um, it asks you if you want to make any instructions. Uh, any notes or credits, you don't have to. But if you were doing this and you wanted kids to really own this, they would want it, you'd want them to put their instructions in here. So let's go ahead, click. Green flag. Eat all the fish. Simple as that. I will now come down here to where it says Embed, and there's my code. You know this. We've done enough of this now in the class that you should have. This should not be anything you don't understand. I'm going to copy that. Uh, I'm going to go up here and get to Wikispaces. And I'll go in here to my junk wiki. I'm going to create a new page. I'm going to call it Scratch Game. I'm going to create it. 
and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And I'm going to come over here. First of all, I'm going to give it a title. This is my scratch game widget. Other HTML. Paste in the code right here. Save it. It's sitting right next to where I have my writing. That's not really where I want it to be. So I'm going to use my cursor and my arrow keys, and I'm going to move it below it. And now I'm going to save it again. There's my game. Now here's what's so watch this. You click on the green, and now you have a you have a game live on your Wikispace page. Edits you could do. You could go in and play with the heights. I mean the size of it. Remember how we talked about this? So let's add 200 to either side. So that would make that and make that and then we'll save that and then we'll save it again and now my game's bigger so if I want to make it bigger on my screen very simple to do okay this video I made it for you to help you with this because the vi first video I made was just too fast. It went through everything too quickly. Um, and you'll notice here, don't even, you don't even have to print out the beginning scratch stuff. Just use what I've got here. There's your code. This is the same code that I used to build the little game. Also, this is where you would click to join the Scratch community. Okay, any questions you might have, you know how to get a hold of me. Monday, we'll go through this again, just for those who need to see it one more time. Although I think as sharp a bunch as you all are, I'm really looking forward to see the variations that you do on this very simple code. Uh, here's a challenge I'll throw at you. Now let's go back to the game to see what I mean. How would you add a soundtrack? How would you add a musical soundtrack? Let me give you a hint. What's the first thing that we need to do anytime we want to create something new or add something new? We want to go to events and click on uh, when the green flag is clicked. Okay. Let's see what birds are alternatives we have here. I can play all kinds of sounds. How would I change it so that we continue to play? So let's look at this. If I drag this over and drop it in here, we can see that it will play a sound. Right now, the only sound it's going to play is the pop. So I'm going to take that out. Maybe I'm going to have it play a sound until the game is done. Hmm. I still don't have any real choice except pop. But if I go up here to sounds, click on the sounds, <coughs> now I can look through here, because there are actual musical sounds in here, and I can add those into my game. I could add bubble sounds into my game. Oh, that's important. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Go to my scripts. Look at my choices. Now I can have bubbles playing. <coughs> okay. What about music? I'll bring that in. Go back to sounds, and now I'm going to stop. I'm going to let you figure that out. Enjoy, enjoy, have fun. I hope this is a fun uh, module. And I look forward to seeing all the different variations 
and all the cool things you do. See you Monday.